to Adventist World Radio's webinar on how you can become a digital missionary. My name is Karen Glassford. I am the Director of Centers for Digital Evangelism, and I want to welcome you here today to this seminar. Let's have a prayer, and then we will begin. Dear Father in Heaven, thank you so much for the presence of each person here. May we be inspired, may we be motivated and see how easy it is to connect heart to heart with people and be able to pray with them and help answer their Bible questions and lead them into a relationship with Jesus. In Jesus name we pray, amen. Today, my colleague Michael Dant, who is project engineer, will be showing you how to use the digital missionary app. At the end of that, you will hear from me again as to how to answer the Bible questions and prayer request. Michael, the time is yours. Thank you, Karen. You know, it is my privilege today to share with you a revolutionary new way to reach people for Jesus in the digital world in which we live. You know, in order to find hurting people, in order to make meaningful connections with them, three things have to happen. First, there's got to be some way that we can find them. Then we have to be able to hear them and thirdly, we have to be able to connect with them, to chat with them, to respond to them and their needs, to build that friendship over the long term. But how can we do that? How can we find them? How can we hear them? And how can we respond to them? Wouldn't it be nice if there was an easy, powerful way to connect with people in a meaningful way and to stay connected with them in order to build that friendship? My friends, that's the great news. There is through online requests. People all over the world are hurting. They have heartfelt prayer requests. They have critical Bible questions that they need answered. And they're willing to share those requests with us online. In fact, research is showing that people are more open online than they are in person. They're more willing to share their desires and needs and pleas with us through a chat than they would through a phone or even in person. And this is Christ's method. He mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, won their confidence, and then bade them follow me. Following up on people's online requests will give us a revolutionary opportunity to follow in Jesus' footsteps and to apply his method in a practical way in the modern world in which we live. Okay, that all sounds great, but how, could, how does it work? How can I become a digital missionary? How can I reach these hurting people? How can I find them? How can I manage the number and type of these requests that I get? How can I chat directly with the people who are making the requests? How can I remember to follow up with them? How can I keep track of my prayer requests? And how can I answer difficult Bible questions? The answer to all these questions is the new Adventist World Radio Digital Missionary App. The Digital Missionary App is a chat application for evangelism. It's like WhatsApp for evangelism or Facebook Messenger for evangelism. It is a chat application with that evangelistic infrastructure built right into the app. It is designed for lay people like you and me to be able to receive, manage, and reply to online requests in a powerful and effective way. And the nice thing about the app is that it interfaces automatically with other social media platforms. You can talk to people on WhatsApp and Viber and Telegram and Facebook Messenger and Signal and SMS and even email right from the app without having to have any accounts in any of those different platforms. And the great thing about it is it protects the privacy of both the digital missionary and the person making the request. They don't know each other's contact information. All that is done through the app automatically. So how can you get started? Well, the first thing you need to do is download the app, and you can do that for both Android and iPhone. On Android, you go to the, the Google Play Store. On iPhone, you go to the App Store, the Apple App Store, and you search for Digital Missionary, those two words, Digital Space Missionary, and look for the AWR Praying Hands logo. Then once you've downloaded the app, you can register and get started. And let's look at how that works. How can we use the Digital Missionary app effectively? Well, the first thing you need to do is to register. So once you start the app, you'll see a screen like this. And on the bottom, it says, have no account, sign up. So you're going to want to click 
on that blue sign up part there to actually create an account and to register for the first time on the app. When you do that, you will see this screen that says sign up. Here you put in your email address and your password and then you verify the password and then you press sign up. Once you've done that, you'll see a screen that says email verification. Now what we've done is we've sent you an email to the email address that you just gave us. And once you get the email, you're gonna to need to click on the link and then your email will be validated. Now make sure you look in your junk and spam folder because it might end up there depending on your system. Look for that email and click on that link. And once you do, you'll be able to continue registration. Here you see the continue registration green button and you will get this message. Your email has been verified. Once your email has been verified, you're ready to enter your profile information. Here you put in your first name, your last name, your church's name, your country, and when you do that, it will automatically put in your country code for the phone number below, and you can change that, of course. Put in your complete phone number, put in your city, your zip code or postal code if you have one. Then press the Continue button. Then you'll be able to put in your pastor's information. Now, why do we ask for your pastor's information? That's because every digital missionary has to be verified by a pastor of the Seventh Avenue Church. We do that because we want all of our digital missionaries to be members in good standing of a Seventh-day Adventist church. So here you put in your pastor's first name, the last name, the pastor's email address, and of course the pastor's full uh, phone number and make sure you get the country code in there as well. Once you've done that, you'll see that there's three buttons at the bottom of that uh, screen. It says your campaigns, your languages, and your locations. You don't have to do anything with any of those right now if you don't want to, but it's kind of a convenient way, at least for your languages. Let's say that you want to receive requests in more than one language, like maybe, for example, English and Spanish. Well, by default, it will only uh, give you requests in the language of your, your operating system, so it may be English. But if you want to do Spanish as well, you would simply press the Your Languages button here, and you would add Spanish as a language that you want to receive requests in. Now in our settings page, which I'll show you uh, here quickly, uh, you'll be able to also change that at any time. So you may or may not want to change your languages. Don't worry about the campaigns or the locations or anything like that yet. You can do that later. Press the green continue button. Once you've done that, then we have a couple very short, important legal documents. The first one is the data processing agreement. This tells you what the standards are for Adventist World Radio and for you in terms of handling and dealing with people's private information. You'll be collecting private information from people. Their requests and their chat with you are private confidential information. And we just want to make sure that you understand what you should and should not do with that data. So read through that very quickly. It's fairly short. Go down to the bottom where it says, I agree. And once you press the I agree button, then it will take you to the short acceptable use policy, which is simply giving you an idea of what we expect users of the app to do, how we expect them to behave and not behave. And you go through that very quickly. At the bottom, there's an I agree button, and then you'll be done with the legal stuff. After you have done all that, then you are actually registered in the system and you're not verified yet, you're not, not activated yet, your pastor has to do that. But until then, you can still log in and there's some things that you can do on the app before you get activated. So you'll come to this login screen. Here you'll enter the email address that you put in before and the password that you gave us. And you will come into our four onboarding screens. The first onboarding screen lets you set up your request limits. So let's press the set up request limits button there in the middle of that onboarding screen. Once you do that, you will see this screen, which shows the different types of requests that you can get. There's prayer requests, there's question requests, and there's study requests. And then it shows you for each of the different types of requests, it shows you the number of unassigned requests in that category. Now, ideally, that number would always be zero because that means that there are no requests that need to be assigned. Everybody has been assigned. Every request that has come in has been assigned to a digital missionary. That's great. But other requests will be coming in, and as they come in, you're going to want to be able to accept them. Now, notice, for example, the prayer requests. If you go to the right, it says zero of 10. That means I currently have zero requests. 
and I can handle 10. That's by default. By default, the app will sign you up for 10 requests and you can change that. You can make it less, you can make it more very easily, right here, in fact. So we don't have any requests yet because we just registered and besides, we're not activated yet, so that'll say zero. Then below that, there's the question requests, all right? Unassigned zero and zero of five to the right. That means I don't have any question requests yet and I can accept up to five of them. That's the default value for the app. You can raise that or lower that any way you want to. And the same then for the study requests. It starts out as zero by default. You can raise that to one or two or five or whatever. And if you're in cell phone evangelism and you wanna be an evangelist on a cell phone evangelism system, then you would wanna set that to something non-zero so that you can be linked to the cell phone evangelism system. Once you're done with that, setting up your limits, and by the way, I should say, these limits are not daily limits or weekly limits or monthly limits. These are forever limits. In other words, unless you change this, you will never get more than 10 people with prayer requests, period, ever, for the rest of your life. And you'll never get more than five Bible questions for the rest of your life. If you get your 10 requests and you want more, then come right in here and increase that number to 15 or 20. But until you increase that number, you will not get any more people with those types of requests. All right. The uh, app is divided into four main pages. And if you look at this, this is the mission page. And you look at the bottom here, you see mission is highlighted. And there's four other pages. There's the connect page, the profile page, and the settings page. Let's just look briefly at these three pages. The mission page has uh, unassigned requests at the top, has a motivational quote below that. Then it has your prayer list. And then scroll down below where you can't see, it has a place where you can share a link to a website where people can submit their requests. And I'll tell you about that later. The connect page looks like this. It will have a list of all of your contacts. And right now you don't have any because you just registered, but you will see one at the top called AWR Help. This is a chat directly to our people at the Center for Digital Evangelism and you can chat with them and ask them your questions. So this is a very easy way to connect with Adventist World Radio. The next page is the profile page. At the top, you will see my interests. This shows you how many interests you have, how many interests you can accept, and you have the ability to change your limits if you wish, like we saw before, where you can change the number of prayer requests you get or the number of Bible questions you get or the number of studies you get or whatever. Below that, there's a performance section which shows you a little bit about how you're doing, how, you're how quickly you're responding, how your messages are being graded, and how your overall score for the Digital Missionary app is. That score will start at around 80, but your goal is to get it to 100, to be as an effective digital missionary as possible. Below that, you see your achievements, which we'll talk about later. And below that, if you scroll down, you'll see a place where you can reach your trainings and you can get some really great digital missionary training right in the app. Okay, here's the settings page, and uh, we'll go through this a little bit more later, but here's where you can change all your information. You can change your profile information, you can change your languages, you can change your request limits, you can change your campaigns, your locations, your notifications, you can see the legal policies, the digital processing agreement, and the acceptable use policy, all from this settings page. All right, how do you get help? If you're stuck, if you're having problems, there's a couple ways to get help. First, on that settings page we just saw was a frequently asked questions item at the bottom where you can get some great information about how to use the app and how to be an effective digital missionary. But of course, remember, if you get stuck, you can always chat with us. There's the AWR help chat on the connect page where you can get uh, connected to somebody and ask them your question. So let's say that you've registered and your pastor has activated you and you get your first request. You'll get a pop-up message on your phone with the person's name and their request. You click on that, that pop-up notification and it will take you directly to the chat for that person. So this, this request came from a guy named Peter. And when you first get this request, you will notice it says, this is your first conversation with Peter. If you wish, you can return the request and pass it to another digital missionary. In other words, if you get a request that you don't feel qualified to handle, maybe it's a, 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 um, a very difficult Bible question and you're just not sure you're gonna be able to handle it well, you can press the, the deny request button here and that request will get shipped off to a different digital missionary. 
Now, of course, we encourage you to handle difficult Bible questions because we want you to grow as a, in your ability to understand the Bible and to be able to explain it. So don't get scared off too easily. But, it, you know, it's reasonable from time to time to pass that off to a more qualified digital missionary. But once you have responded to this request, once you've chatted back with Peter, this request is yours and it will be yours for the long term. So don't respond back until you're sure you want to keep it. But be sure you respond back within 48 hours, because if you don't respond to a request within 48 hours, that request will automatically be taken away and given to another digital missionary. We want you to follow up as quickly as possible. So here is how you do that. Now notice the request came in with a green background and the request is, please pray for my daughter who is having surgery tomorrow. Okay, that's a great request. And what are we going to do? We're going to immediately chat back. I chatted back, I will pray. May the Lord richly bless your family during this difficult time. And then there's a blue send button right be uh, beside that. I press the send button and the message goes to Peter directly. And underneath that send button, you can't see it right here, but there's a little microphone. And you can actually record an audio message to Peter. Either a prayer, which is a very nice personal way to, uh, to send a prayer, or uh, just a message. You can send them an audio message. Also, let's say that uh, you want to send Peter an inspirational promise from the Bible to help encourage him. Well, you can do that very easily. Notice on the left, there's a little A to the left of this text box where we're entering data. After I send this data, after I press the blue button, I'll be able to press the A button and I'll come to the built-in knowledge base. Here you see on the top, it has greetings, Bible questions, and prayer requests. So I go to the prayer request tab and then we have add your own articles, all material, prayers, promises, and songs. So I click on promises. Here's a list of promises for strength, for example. I go down the list and I find the bottom one. Do not fear for I am with you. I love this promise. I'm going to share this. So there's a little attach button on the bottom right of that promise. I click the attach button and then a little pop-up thing will say add one media, which I want to do. So I press that and now that promise is in the chat. I have a chance here to edit it. I can say, hey, Peter, here's a great promise for you or whatever. And then I can then send that promise very easily. So the built-in knowledge base is a way to get information about Bible questions or Bible promises that you can share with people easily and it's built right in the app. But remember, your job is not done once you send back a response to the prayer request. You want to develop a friendship with this person. You want to uh, respond to their needs to minister to them over the longer term. So you want to, to um, remember to follow up with them. Now, Peter's daughter is having surgery uh, tomorrow. And so it would be nice if in a couple days we came back to him and say, hey, Peter, I've been praying for you and your daughter, and I was wondering if you have any status update for me. So we're going to add a reminder. To do that, it's very simple. Up in the upper right of this chat with Peter, there's three vertical dots. That's the menu for this chat. If I go in there, there's several things I can do. One of them in the middle there is reminders. Click on reminders, and now I can see all of the reminders that I have set up for Peter. And there are none yet, of course, but there's a little plus button up in the upper right, so I press that. And here I can say, daughter having surgery, May 15. And I can choose when I want to get my reminder. I'm going to do it in two days. So two days from now, I'm going to get a reminder that says, daughter having surgery, May 15. So I press the add button, and now that reminder is in the system. And I'm ready to go. Another thing I might want to do is I might want to look at Peter's interest profile and update it. So that same three dots at the top is a menu for Peter, and at the top there is an interest profile option. So I select interest profile and I will see this screen. Here is where I can keep notes about my interactions with Peter. Here is where I can keep some information that I find out about Peter that can be useful later. And here is where I can notify the Center for Digital Evangelism of different events in Peter's uh, life cycle in his coming to Jesus. So first of all, let's look at the information that we can record about Peter. In the upper right, there's a little pencil icon. You click on that icon and you will see some information that you can edit and change about Peter. His first name, his last name, his church affiliation, his country, his phone number, city, postal code, if 
he gives it to us if, through the chat, he can do that. Now, normally you won't have this information. You may not even have his first name. So as you get to know them and as you chat, you might find out some information about him, more about his name or where he lives. And if you want to, you can put that information in here so that we can contact them if he, if he requests to be contacted later on. Once we've done with all the information or we can edit it later, we press the save button and we're back to the, pro, the interest profile. And notice uh, we can see where his, when his first request came in, when the last reply went out. We can see what communication channel he's on, WhatsApp, and we can see uh, notes that we might have kept for Peter. So let's do that. Let's press the see notes button. A little pop-up will come up with the notes and I'm going to type in has a daughter who had surgery on May 15, 2021. So now we're keeping information about Peter in this note. And when we're done, we press the save button and we're back to the profile screen. Oh, I should actually say also that here on the profile screen, you'll see these four buttons. These buttons are very powerful, very important. The first one is the church button. The church button is, you will press this when a interest says that they are interested in being connected to a local church. What this will do is it will send a message to the Adventist World Radio Center for Digital Evangelism that this person wants to be connected to the local church, and the CDE can help do that for them. There's also a baptism button. You press that when this person indicates that they would like to be baptized. And of course you work with your local pastor on this as well, but you can also press this button and the Center for Digital Evangelism will get that information and it can help you follow up. There's also a mute button there. If this interest happens to be the type that will flood you with chats every one every five minutes and you want to just handle them you know every hour or so you can press the mute button the messages will still come in you just won't see notifications on your phone you'll have to come in to the connect page you'll see the messages that came in you can read them and then respond to them all at once also there's a deactivate button um, if this um, Interest is you know, saying things that are inappropriate or whatever, you can press the deactivate button and you'll no longer see them on your active seeker list. All right, so back to the mission page. Notice that there is um, a prayer list on there and if you press the prayer list button, you will see a list of all your prayer requests. Now we just got a prayer request from Peter and so the, the app is gonna automatically add that request in the prayer list for you. Here you can see that we have one prayer list on our list because we just started and it says please pray for my daughter who is having surgery tomorrow and there's a blue pray button right beside it. So these requests are automatically added to your prayer list but the neat thing about this prayer list is that you can add your own prayer list manually and you can even categorize your prayer requests. You can have a Monday prayer request and a Tuesday prayer list and you can have a family prayer list, you can have a school prayer list, whatever you want, you can categorize them. But let's do that. Let's add a manual prayer request very quickly. Here you can see the plus button. You press that plus button on the upper right, and it will take you to <clears throat> the add prayer request page. Here you can type in your request. You can <clears throat> uh, specify what category. Right now it's in the general category. And if this request is linked to one of your current interests in the app, then you can actually specify who, uh, who that interest is right there where it says interest. But if it's just a, a generic request from a family member or from a, somebody at work or whatever, you just leave that blank and it's a generic request. Then once you've typed that in, you press the add button and that will go into your prayer list. Now, we've sent a response to Peter and we've sent him a Bible promise and he responds back. He says, thank you. And then he says, you know, my son is having an important test this week, and I would appreciate if you would pray for him as well. So that's great. See, we're, we're, we're developing a relationship with Peter, and he's trusting us with some more prayer requests. And so this is fantastic. But this is not a formal prayer request. Notice it doesn't have the green, the dark green background that our formal prayer request had. This is just a chat. This is a response back from him. And in this chat, he just happens to share a prayer request with us. So that's called an informal prayer request. We want to put that in our prayer list and we can do that very easily. All you have to do is long click on that light green chat where it says, thank you, my son is taking important touch. Just long click on that, press on it and wait for a few seconds. And then you will see this little menu pop up. That one option is to reply or another option is add to prayer list. 
So you can press the add to prayer list and it will then, uh, you, can, you can type in what you want about the prayer request right there. You can put it in the category that you want. You can uh, make sure that you connect it with Peter because Peter is the interest that's connected to this prayer request. Then you can press the add button. And now your prayer list has two prayer requests in it. One was, the first one was added automatically when the, press, the formal request came in. The second one was added manually by you when the chat came in and you long pressed and added it. And of course it went into the general category because that's what we selected. Now notice there's two prayer requests here and both of the prayer requests have blue buttons beside them. At the beginning of your day and or at the end of your day or whenever you do your prayers, when you pray for this person, simply press the blue button besides that prayer request and it will turn green and it will go to the bottom of the list. Then you pray for the next blue one at the top and it will turn green and go to the bottom of the list. Once your entire list has turned green, you know that you've completed your prayer list for the day. So that's a really easy way to pray for everybody to make sure that you remember to pray for them and to make sure that nobody falls through the cracks. Okay, a couple days later, guess what? A reminder comes into this chat with Peter. Now remember, we asked for a reminder in a couple days to follow up about his daughter. And here you see the reminder came in, in blue, a couple days later, it said, reminder, daughter having surgery, 515. All right, now I wanna respond, I wanna say, hey, I've been praying for you and for your daughter. How did the surgery go, right? Following up, building that friendship, you can do that right here because the reminder came in. And the app also has the ability to broadcast messages to more than one person at a time. Let's say, for example, that you find out about a new Bible study resource that you are really excited about and you want to share with all of your people or a certain list of people. You can do that very easily. In the Connect page, where you see your list of all your interests, there's three vertical dots, which is your menu for the Connect page. And in that menu, you have some things that you can do. Notice that the second from the top is Broadcast. Click on Broadcast. And you will see this page where you can have a list of broadcasts that you can keep and you can keep broadcasting over and over again throughout the life cycle. Let's say that, for example, we want to click, we want to send a message to all of our interests. So we click on the all interests button. We then type in our chat message. Hi, I just want to let you know that there is an exciting new video seminar on the Bible book of Revelation. You can find it at awr.org slash Bible. Then I press the send button and now that message has gone out to all my contacts and it will ask me, uh, well actually it'll ask me first which contacts I want to go out to. It can go to all interests, it can go to just the prayer request interests. For example, you might want to share an inspirational um, promise with your prayer request interests from time to time. Or to your question interests or to your study interests or to all of them. I'm going to choose all interests because I only have one. And now that message has gone out to all of the people on my list. So that's a very easy way to send messages to multiple people at once. You can also, uh, if you don't do an all interest one, you can actually select a list of people that you want to broadcast to. Now, one of the things that we would like for you to do as a digital missionary is to become a, a better digital missionary. And so we've built into the app some ways that you can do that. First of all, on the profile page, you will see the performance section where you can see your response time, you can see your chat score, and you can see your overall DM score. Try to keep that, that response time number low if you can, right? You want to keep it down to hours or minutes if you can, not, uh, not 10 hours or 20 hours uh, if possible. The chat score is from uh, chats that are graded. From time to time, experts in the field will grade some of your messages that you send to your interests. And we do this for several reasons. One, we want to, to uh, have a way built in to mentor you and to encourage you and to give you some ideas about ways that you can be doing some things better. That's growing. But also, we as, a, as an Adventist World Radio um, app are using our channels to send these requests and these chats to other people. And we have to make sure that your responses to these people uphold the standards and beliefs of the Seventh Adventist Church. So this is a great way to grow as a missionary and a great way to make sure that you are sending out messages that are appropriate. So notice if you go back to our chat with Peter, 
Notice that in each of the chats that we sent him, the white ones with the white background, there is a little star in those chats. And they're all green. That's good. Green means that those chats have been accepted and they've been sent to Peter. Red means that those requests, those chats have been denied because there was a serious issue with them. If you click on that star, you will actually see a note that the, uh, the person who graded that, that chat left for you. So I'm going to press on the green star on the top chat, the one that says, I will pray, may the Lord richly bless you and your family during this difficult time. I'm going to press the green star. When I do, I see that this message has been approved and the supervisor that graded it said, this is great. You might also want to send them an audio message with a prayer. In other words, you did a good job, fantastic, no problem here, but a suggestion that you might want to think about if you wish. So it's a way to grow as a digital missionary. Also, built into the app, if you scroll down on the profile page, you will see achievements and courses. Achievements are fun little ways to reach some milestones in your work as a digital missionary. Notice that besides your achievements, there's this little more button. If you click on that, you'll see a bigger list of achievements, and you'll see that there's Messenger Achievement, there's a Prayer Warrior 1, a Prayer Warrior 2, a Prayer Warrior 3, a Bible Scholar 1. These little achievements can be achieved by doing certain things in the app. And to find out what you need to do, uh, you just click on the different achievement here on the screen. So let's click on the Prayer Warrior 1. When we do that, we see that uh, we have not started this, there, that progress bar is empty. Um, but in order to get this achievement, we need to successfully handle five people who have prayer requests. So once we've done that, we will then get this uh, achievement. And of course, once we handle our first one, we should see a little progress bar here, and a second one, a little bit more progress, and we'll be able to see our progress as we go along. Also, uh, built into the app are courses that help you to become a more effective digital missionary, and one of them is about the app. Here we have three lessons, overview of the app, using the app basic, and using the app advanced. And you can just press the start button, get started on that course. We hope you will enjoy these courses and will be benefited by them. And you get achievements by taking more of the courses. All right, let's just spend a, a, a minute looking at our settings page just to make sure that it's clear what this page does and what's available to you. On the top is my information. Again, this is where you can change information. Maybe you typed in your name wrong, or maybe you typed in your phone number wrong. This is where you change your profile information. And then below that is my languages. Here's where you can add or remove languages that you want to receive requests in. Below that is my request limits. Here's another place, the third place in the app where you can actually set your request limits. How many prayer requests you want? How many Bible questions you want? How many Bible studies you want? You can do that here on the settings page. Of course, you can do it on the profile page as well. Um, below my requests are my campaigns. Campaigns are simply ways of grouping digital missionaries together. So it's not necessarily an evangelistic campaign. Maybe, for example, your church just wants, your personal ministries department at your church wants to get uh, lay people involved, and so they start a, uh, a, a local church campaign, and they can call it whatever they want to. They can call it uh, Fun for Jesus or whatever, and they invite you to that campaign. And then you as a team, a small group of digital missionaries can communicate with each other and you can work together as a team on the, the app. So that's what Campaigns is about. My Locations allows you to specify the locations where you want to receive requests from. So you can, for example, put in some zip codes. I want to receive requests from this zip code and this zip code and this zip code. Or you can say, I, want to, I, I live in Chicago, I want to receive requests that are in Chicago. Or I want to receive requests that are in Africa or whatever, you can request, you can specify where you want your requests to come from, and you do that in the My loca Locations area. There's also My Notifications, where you can set up notification settings. Security will allow you to use biometrics to, to log into the app if you wish. Policies, remember, has those two legal documents, the, the uh, data processing agreement and the acceptable use policy that you can use to go back and read through those again if you wish at any time. About app will have the version of the app. FAQs will be where you find out more information about the app and how to use it. Contact us is there to get more information. And then the log out button if you want to log out from the app, which you really don't have to do, never really need to do. You can stay logged in as long as you want. Now, <clears throat> there 
may or may not be requests available when you register as a digital missionary. And, and let's say there aren't. Let's say, like in this page here, you see there's zero unassigned requests, but you want some requests. Well, the good news is you can get requests by yourself. You can share the Adventist World Radio requests page with your friends and family and neighbors and coworkers, and you can share with them a specific request page where the requests that come in will come to you. To do that, you go to the mission page of the app, you scroll down to the bottom where it says connect with people who need help, you press the share link button. When you do that, a share pop-up will come in and you'll be able to click on a different social media chat form and you'll be able to then share a link to the generic request page for Adventist World Radio to anyone you wish. That request page looks like this. It simply says, how can we serve you? And it has a button for pray for me, to start a Bible study, ask a Bible question. They can press, for example, pray for me. When they do that, then it'll let them choose what channel they want to use, what social media ch channel they want to use. It will let them type in their name and their request. And when they submit that request, that request will come to you. All requests that come from the link that you share will come directly to you. So that's a great way to get more requests in the system. And remember that this, where it says share link here at the bottom, this request page that you share, all the requests that come in through that page will come directly to you. But let's say you want to get requests, but you don't want them to come to you. Let's say that you've got enough requests right now, but you want to just share this with uh, far and wide with friends and family and neighbors and coworkers, and the requests don't necessarily come to you. You can do that very easily by using the generic URL, requests.awr.org. You can share this URL with anyone, anywhere. Share it on Facebook. Make a business card and share it out. And <clears throat> put it on the sidewalk and people in front of people when they're walking by. Whatever, requests.awr.org. They can go to this page. It looks exactly like your personal request page. But they can go to this page. They can add a request. And that request will then be routed to the most appropriate digital missionary based on language, based on location, based on all those things we looked at. So it's a very easy way to get requests. And we hope that all of our digital missionaries will, will share this page far and wide so that our digital missionaries will have requests that we can follow up with. So what can you do? The first thing you can do is download the app for Android or iPhone. Simply search on the store for your phone, Digital Missionary. Make sure you look for the Praying Hands, AWR Praying Hands logo. That's the app. You download it. And then make sure that you stay tuned for further information about the app and training events that we'll be having. And the best way to stay tuned is on the AWR Help Chat. You'll get notifications from Adventist World Radio when these different programs happen and you can get, um, get involved. So that's an overview of the app. I hope that you've had a, uh, that you've enjoyed this overview. There's a lot here. I understand that. Uh, this is just kind of to give you an idea of what's possible. And we're going to make this video available so that you can watch it anytime you want to, and you can go back and review the different places that you might have questions. And of course, if, if the video doesn't answer the question, you can always ask your question on AWR Help Chat right inside the app. Now, my friend Karen Glassford, the Director for Centers for Digital Evangelism, is going to share with us some best practices to help us to become the most effective digital missionaries that we can be. Thank you, Michael, for your presentation on how to use the Digital Missionary app. Wasn't that exciting? Now we're going to learn how we should answer Bible questions and prayer requests. And we're going to just start out with some real basic things that most of you would know. But first of all, when we're writing, make sure that we write with proper capitalization and proper punctuation. So we look as professional as possible, right? Try to avoid all the LOLs and BRBs and all those little abbreviations that are used in texting, right? And don't make sentences choppy short and don't write them so long that you could cut them into several sentences, right? Always be gracious, listen and read well. Focus on what they are saying and pray for them. Realize that in writing, many things can be misunderstood. Remember that angry people are often hurting people and be gracious to them even if they don't deserve it. 
Ask questions that invite them to chat with you. Don't assume anything. Ask for clarification such as, do I understand correctly that this has been upsetting to you? Never write in all caps because that means that you are shouting at them. And of course you can't win somebody that you're shouting at, right? So, and then be careful with the emojis that you use, realizing that even though the people you're communicating with speak your language, may not mean that they understand the same cultural things that you understand. So in some cultures, the little kissy emoji just means I'm greeting you. It's nothing romantic. In other cultures, it definitely is, right? And so we've got to be careful, you know, the little hands up, is that praise the Lord or is that let me give you a hug? You know, the smiley face is usually okay. Just be careful how you use the uh, emojis and any abbreviations. Become friends with them, but do not give out too much personal information, especially at first. You don't know who they really are and you need to get to know them a little bit first. Maybe you will get a prayer request of, I need to find a wife. Will you pray for me to find a wife? Now, that may be the most sincere uh, prayer request ever, but he also may be wondering if you're available, if you're a young woman, right? So you can say, we'll be so happy to pray for you on that. Do you also have any Bible questions that you would like to ask us? And then, of course, record or type out a prayer for that young man that God will lead him to the right person in his life. Sometimes you'll get general questions such as, are you, uh, what denomination do you belong to? Are you a Seventh-day Adventist? And you can say, you know, we don't follow any particular person's opinion. What we do is we look for what does the Bible say and we deeply study. You know, personally, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. You can say that, but we're wanting them to know that the answers are not coming from some preacher or some church. They're coming directly out of God's word. When we get to Bible questions, what are some of the things we want them to remember when we're answering them? Thank them for their excellent question and their desire to know God's answer. Establish the Bible as authoritative in their life. Connect heart to heart as much as possible and create curiosity so that they will want to contact you further. Somebody wrote us and said, who is Babylon? Well, that's kind of an odd question, right? Because Babylon's not a who, it's a what. But this person wrote back. Now, if you know that it's going back as an email, do say, Dear Abigail. Otherwise, you can just start texting, right? So you can say, Thank you for sending us your excellent Bible question. It is good to go to the Bible when we have questions since God can be trusted. He knows the past, the present, and the future. I find it very exciting to search for answers. I hope you will find this helpful. And then they gave a list of all the instances in the Bible that the word ba Babylon is used in the different connotations, right, that it's used in. And then they said, I hope this helps you with your study. Do you have a specific question about Babylon? Just let me know if you have additional questions on any Bible topic. Also, if you have a prayer request, I will be happy to answer, to pray for your request anytime. God bless you and I hope to hear from you again. So when we get to prayer requests, what are our goals? You want to thank them for sharing their prayer request with you. You know, it might be something very personal to them. Establish the Bible as not just the ultimate source of authority, you know, that comes from God since it's his word, but it's also the ultimate source of comfort for us when we're going through difficult times. So connect with the person as much as you can heart to heart and also create a curiosity for them to have further contact with you. We got a prayer request one day from somebody uh, who was a refugee. He and his family were fleeing for their lives from where they had lived previously because they had become Christians. And he was very discouraged. And so we, the, our digital missionary wrote back and said, Dear Tarek, thank you for sharing your prayer request with me. I would like to personally pray for you. Dear God, thank you for this connection that I have been able to make with Tarek today. You know, you want him to feel like you are heart to heart with him. Lord, Tarek and his family are currently homeless refugees. You're explaining the situation. This is a most difficult situation. 
you want him to know that you understand that this has got to be really difficult, right? Really rough. But today I praise you, Lord, you're giving him courage, that you are a refuge in times of trial. You are our safe place. You will never forsake those that seek you. When the in, What the enemy has meant for evil, you can turn to good. And the reference there is the story about Joseph whose brothers sold him into slavery, but God used it for good in order to save their lives, right? Thank you for not forgetting our cries. Lord, may Tarek always ask you for wisdom as he lives in these difficult circumstances. You see the Bible verses that you have just summarized, but they can go and look up. Um, thank you for your promise in Deuteronomy 31, 6, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you for listening to our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Then this digital missionary went on to do something else. In the database that you have on your app, there is a database of songs that we have just found on YouTube that we have put under different topics, and they decided to share a song to encourage Tarek and his family. I want to assure you that I will continue to pray for you. Please feel free to contact us again with any other Bible questions or prayer requests you might have. We would love to hear from you again anytime and know how you are doing. Then you need to reread your what you're going to send before you hit send to make sure that you have prayed about it and seen if God wants you to take something out or put something in and that you haven't forgotten to invite them to reconnect with you. This is for quality control. And you will get questions like this. Can I still have long-term goals though I know Jesus is coming soon? How do I preach the word of God without fear of being disowned by my family? That is a rough thing for this young man, and you really need to not only pray for him as a prayer that you send back that he can listen to or read, but you really need to remember to pray for him every day. We got another prayer request. Please pray for me. I am suffering for depression. My friends think that I am okay, but I just can't stop thinking of all the bad stuff that has happened to me. I read the Bible, but I just don't know how to find help. Give her some Bible promises. Make sure you check up on her often and see how she's doing. Um, another one that we received. Is it okay to tell white lies in order to save ourselves or others? Like, what about the story of Rahab and the spies, right? She had a good heart. She wanted to save them. Is that okay? Well, that is a difficult question to answer, not because of honesty or dishonesty, but because different cultures have different definitions of honesty. What may be 100% honest in one culture may be a little bit iffy or white lie-ish in another culture. So you can share what you would do in that situation. You can say, you know, God is not limited to one or two options. He has three, four, or five or more options. And we need to ask God for wisdom as to how to answer and still be honest and care for the people that God has put in our care. And then there is a mother that wrote in, please help me. I'm having to teach my daughter at home. I get so very frustrated as she doesn't listen well. I get angry and yell at her. I don't want to be like this. I love her so much. What can I do? Now, that mother may just be a frustrated mother, but it's also possible that that mother is abusive. And so you need to ask some questions, pray, and maybe talk to your pastor about this because most pastors know what to do in these types of situations and can give you some godly advice because we don't want anything happening to that child. Maybe you'll get a doctrinal question like, how are we supposed to observe the Sabbath day and what activities are appropriate? Again, appropriate activities often change slightly not dramatically, but slightly from one culture to the other. What might be considered uh, just play and everyday activities would not be considered that in another culture, right? So share something that you enjoy. Like personally, I love getting together with fellow believers to study God's word, getting together maybe for a meal afterwards. And, um, you know, when I was young, my parents used to take me on nature walks on Sabbath afternoons, and I loved it. So you can and say, you know what, go ahead and do a study for yourself and see what kinds of things you think that you could do on the Sabbath to make it extra special for yourself or your family or whatever. 
Maybe they'll ask another biblical question. Is it biblical that Christ will take us to heaven before the great tribulation? Here is a place that you might want to share a link by maybe Cami Utman with Unlocking Bible Prophecies or with Elder Dwayne McKee with Earth's Final Countdown. Something about the end of time, the great tribulation, the signs of the times. And then say, hey, after you've watched this, let's talk some more about this and see if it's raised any more questions or if it's helped to answer some of your questions. Can the Bible predict my future? I want God's leading and don't know how to find it. This is somebody who is really, really seeking after God, and that is so commendable. Make sure that you commend this person for wanting God to lead them and that we can know that we are living in the last days. So to a certain extent, the Bible does predict our future. It says that if we accept Jesus, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to save us from all unrighteousness and that he will save to the uttermost those who come to him, right? Well, maybe you'll get one from a child like this one. Hey, I'm only 11. My parents don't seem to be very interested in the Bible. I have not been baptized by water. Am I doomed? What a precious little child. Pray a lot and be very gentle and share Bible stories with her and get her engaged in talking about things about how Jesus can help make her life even happier and also help her to be a witness to her parents. Ellen White says, to save souls should be the life work of everyone who professes Christ, everyone. That includes you and me. That means that each one of us have been called to missionary, to missionary service. Some of us in foreign lands, some of us right where we are, some of us to work digitally online, but we are all called to be missionaries for Jesus. She goes on to say, if the people of God would only exercise faith, he would work in a wonderful manner to accomplish this work. Hear the words of Christ. If two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Precious promise. Do we believe it? What marvelous results would appear if united prayers of this company were to ascend to God in living faith? Jesus stands ready to take these petitions and present them to his Father, saying, I know these persons by name. Send answers to their prayers, for I have graven their names on the palms of my hands. Isn't Jesus wonderful? He's personal. He wants to use you. And if you would like to join us for future trainings, more information, a place to get even more questions answered, where we can share even more resources, do fill out the form that you find at the address that's going to appear at the bottom of your screen. Now, if we have managed to finish this in the allotted amount of time, we will also have questions and answers afterwards. If not, then please come to the Adventist World Radio booth and check out the webinar schedule because there'll be other webinars and you can come and hear it again and you will have enough time to ask questions about the app. In fact, we might have some sessions that are just questions and answers of how to become better digital missionaries for Jesus. So cannot wait to hear your stories and how God is going to use you.